Karen Birchall, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Take time to hit the subscribe button. If you click on the bell, you can choose the option to be notified as soon as I upload new videos. That way you won't miss any. Today we have a video in the Build Your Stash series. In this series, I show you inexpensive and quick ways that you can take a little time and build your art journaling and mixed media stash. And then you have the supplies and materials at the ready when you want to create. If you wish to support my channel, you can shop through my Amazon influencer links or make a donation through my PayPal link. Both of these links can be found in the description box below. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. In part one, I give you Creative Katie recommended background or texture stamps that you can buy and to build your stash. In part two, we make some designer tissue paper. Hi everybody. I'm so excited. I have a brand new stamp. There was a 50% off sale on stamps and I saw this one and I didn't hesitate to pick it up because I know I'm going to get my use out of it. And it occurred to me that maybe I should do a build your stash video on how to select stamps for mixed media for art journaling. Now the stamps I'm going to talk about are not stamps that are going to be focal images. So they're not going to necessarily be of a butterfly or an owl. Those are, those, those are stamps that serve a different purpose. These are stamps that are going to add to and make for interesting backgrounds. And if you watch my videos, you see me using stamps in on almost every single project. I use ink to stamp on. I use acrylic paint to use these stamps and put them onto my backgrounds. So why did this one come home with me? Because realistically in Canada, this costs $28 at Michael's. It was regular price $27.99. Yeah, $28 and I got it 50% off. And even at that, I don't like the thought of spending, you know, my hard earned cash on stamps unless I know that I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. So I'm hoping that in this video, by showing you examples of stamps that have made the cut, I can save you from making those mistakes and spending your crafting dollars wisely. So this stamp, it's a swirl. It's kind of organic. It is non-specific. It's not tied to any one theme. So that's why it's made the cut. Now, most of the stamps that I get that are on the blocks, I take off the block and that's what I've done here. Now I peeled it off a little bit and if you get any resistance at all and, and even if you don't I suggest just put the block with the stamp on it in the microwave just 10 seconds and then it just loosens the glue enough that you can peel it off and then I just put a thing of acetate on the back. Now the reason I did that is when I stamp this for my purposes, I am not necessarily looking to get the whole entire stamp. I want to stamp parts of this. So it doesn't have to have necessarily the support. Now if I want to do a whole one and I want to get a really good stamp, I can always use one an acrylic block on this. But, you know, I might just want some curls or, and I can bend this and stamp accordingly. And you might say, well, that's imperfect. But when it's adding to the background, that's what you're looking for. So that's why this stamp made the mix. Now this is Hero Arts and I will put any of the ones that I can find in um, 
in Amazon. I will put links to them as Creative Katie approved. And I can't read it without my, my glasses right now. So that makes the cut. What also makes the cut as a must have in my books is my script stamp. This was a wooden block stamp. It was French script. And I've used this so much. And again, I don't want a rectangle. I don't want the whole stamp on there. Usually I'm putting little bits and adding it at different points in time during the process. Sometimes I put it in the first layer and then I add it later. Sometimes I use ink at the beginning and, and, and acrylic paint afterwards. If you use acrylic paint, you also get texture. So a script stamp, absolute necess necessity. Now this is French script and it's quite small. So for the longest time, I was looking for a stamp that was a little bit bigger and I finally found and purchased this darkroom door one. And it actually says, let love rule, do what makes your soul happy, smile often, do small things with great love. So there are nice words on here and it's very scrolly and skipped. And now they're calling it a background stamp. And that's what you want to look for, background stamps or texture stamps. And over time, you can build it up. Now, I put the arrow there because that's the way the script is going to go. But again, I may only want to see some script peeking through. And when I do it, and now you've seen me do it on my projects, I'm not looking to get it so terribly perfect at all. So script stamps, different size scripts, a definite, definite go. Now I prefer for background stamps, especially when I'm using acrylic paint, not the um, clear stamps. I find these, they get really clogged up with paint and they're a little harder to manipulate um, on there. This one's kind of a crackle one. So that's good. This was another stamp and actually I have two halves of this. The dots. I could cut this into four. I cut it into two because when I teach classes then I, we have two students that can have it. And you just get those dots. And I can bend it And get that so that works really well so you get this was a big stamp again it was as big as this one and so you get more than one stamp out of it so if you share with a friend and you you know cut it up you can do that another one is a music stamp now this was a mistake and I will put a link to better what I consider better music stamps this one has a lot of embellishments on the sides here what I want is the music notes. I don't want all the other stuff, so that this I can still use it in the center part. But this part I find it doesn't really doesn't really add to my projects too much. So I want something that has more of these. Kaisercraft has a lot of um, texture stamps. This one is from Carabelle Studios. And it made the cut, even though again, the you know they are not inexpensive. They... And you can use these with an acrylic block if you wish. And sometimes I would do, and sometimes I don't. It just adds that little bit. And more times than not, I'm just you know adding a few here and there. And you can see it's just it's this page is added lots of interest with just the variety of texture stamps. This came with a another stamp that just had kind of text. I find this text too small. But you know, I will use this. 
I definitely, I wanted the circles. Circles are very, very organic and they fit a lot of different, different ones. My Coastal Escape uh, stamp from Kaiser Craft. And you can see there's lots of acrylic paint in here. I do try to keep it clean. I can throw this into my mixture, you know, uh, Murphy's Oil Soap and let it soak and take a toothbrush to it and, and get it out. But I'm not using it to get clear stamping for card making. I'm using it in mixed media. And this is another stamp that, you know, has has a lot of use in it. Another kind of stamp that you can look for are mandelas. Different kinds of mandelas. Now a couple of these I got they were just in the you know dollar fifty bin back in the day from Michaels. And so I can just put those on. This is another mandela that was from Michaels. And smaller ones I tend to leave on the blocks Sometimes it's a storage thing too. This was a, hmm, I'm not even sure what brand that was. I think it was Stamp Pandas. But again, you have, it kind of has that lacy feel. So it gives some interesting texture. This is a stamp that I've, you know, actually I forgot I had, but I'm, I'm glad that I dug it out today and it has it's kind of Mandela but it has kind of three stamps in one three different rings and it just makes for some interesting background stamp You know, again, talking about the Michaels bin, this actually had the word cheers in it. I think there was a wine glass and it said cheers. Not something I'm going to use, but I thought, you know what? Those dots would make a nice texture kind of background. And it does. I've used this. So I just cut it apart and I'm using a piece. And when it's in the $1.50 bin, you can't go wrong. There's this one, and I don't know, hot off the press, I believe. And so again, it's very organic, and it's just, it's something that's going to go into the background. My foliage cube, and I finally found the Amazon link to this one. I have used this so much. I've used it to make grass, I've used it as for Christmas trees. It's just been very, very usable. And, you know, so, and it has four, four different stamps on it. I have another block stamp and this one again by Stamp Pandas um, tiled quad so again this makes for interesting background and it has four different patterns so you get lots it's a little small I prefer some of the bigger ones but it, it definitely will have its place and we're going to use these the other one that I have that I have definitely used a fair bit are collections like this this Tim Holtz collection and it's bitty grunge now the problem with this is they're they're small but they definitely work 
as well and there's a good variety of texture so if you're starting out that might be something that you may want to do and the first thing you know that I recommend that you do when you get a stamp collection like this is actually take it and make some stamping with it see it because even you know I've had stamps that are in the collection and then I finally go and use it and I think oh my goodness that is awesome and this is this is one of them it's one in his collection here that I haven't really used lots but I'm, I'm loving it. It's kind of like splattered ink. So you get many different textures. And if there is a texture here, if I really end up liking this one or one of these other ones, then I know that maybe I want to look for that in some bigger form and it's going to be worth my money. You know, I will put a link to the video where I am making my own stamps because you definitely want to do that. You know, um, I know Diane Reevely has some texture stamps. I know, you know. So, since I have all these stamps out, I thought we'll continue to do, we'll kind of, this will be a double up. You get lots of advice here on, you know, buying stamps that are going to have longevity, that are going to work for more than one type of page. I like the larger ones. You can cut them apart. You can share them with your friends. And always, always, always shop for sales. So what I thought we would do now is just take some of these stamps and I can stamp those directly onto an art journal page. But what I can also do is stamp them onto tissue paper, which then I can rip and use to cover the whole background or cover parts of it and it will add pattern much in the same way that a napkin has you know lots of interesting they have colors and textures and sometimes different stamps so what I'm going to do is just using my black archival and black you know I'm using that because it's going to uh, stay on here I'm just going to make some Now this is pattern, this is an old pattern, and you can get these at the thrift store. I'm going to zoom out so that we get to see more. And I'm just putting this on here. I like this golden color. It will definitely give kind of a vintage-y feel to your page. And so now that I have, when you have all your stamps out, if you're a build a stash, you don't want to have to go and put everything away right away now you can spend money and you can buy Tim Holtz's papers and and you know prepackaged papers but you can make your own do a quick build your sass just like we're doing now. You can look at those and say, why do I like this one? And see if you can figure do it with your stamps. Now I'm just using the stamps that we talked about here, but I could be using some of my homemade stamps as well. And I'm not overthinking this in any form. I'm really trying to do this very randomly. And I find they, they make the nicest pieces and additions later on when I grab out of my stash. 
and you can layer them up you don't have to you know cover every inch of this but you can put one on top of the other So that's that. So let's grab another sheet. And this is just tissue paper. Now this has kind of a shiny side and I'm going to, I'm stamping on the non-shiny side. I've done both and it, it honestly, I don't know that it matters, but if I'm paying attention, For the longest time, you know, after I bought the stamp, I didn't use it. And now this dots, I absolutely love it. And I love it when it peeks through on the pages. As well. This is a good way to get to know your stamps. Dig out your stamps and just stamp on tissue paper. You can stamp on the ply of the napkin that you've pulled off when you've pulled off like the white part from behind if you're using napkins in your art. Now, while I said you, you know, some of the stamps that you have focal images of, these are some stamps that are pretty neutral in my world. You know, the Anne stamp, uh, I would put them on, on many projects that they would fit most of how I do art, as would this heart, hearts one, even a starfish might be, or a dream catcher. That, it's neutral enough. And if you look at Tim Holtz's papers, um, you'll see that. Really, these are going to be background. They're not, you're not using them as focal images. So they're just going to add that little bit of something, something in the background. And when you're doing this, you can fill up every little last piece Or you can leave white space. You can go by theme if I wanted to and do papers that way. But I find the ones that I use are not the thematic ones. If I'm going to do a theme, I'm going to do it direct on the page. Let's do some of this inky splatter. Okay. So I could grab more tissue paper, or what I can do is do it on to some of the coffee filters. Remember one of the Build Your Stash, when I think one of the first Build Your Stash, I had um, 
doing using coffee filters to clean up old you know leftover paint and or just painting on it because I love collaging with these but I can have a series of these and put this layer on first the whole idea again of build your stash is save time you know I've got if I look around me if I scanned here I've got you know oodles of stamps out I, I don't want to drag all my stamps out when kind of like that just the way it is so let's just do a few more here now this one if I, I'm you know con considering taking it off the block because it has these hearts and it can become very neutral it doesn't have to be a tree I've used this as a focal image in some of my um, on some of my pages but it doesn't have to be and I find when you're just doing this and you're throwing it down you are more likely to become more creative and less inhibited than when you're overthinking it because that's one thing that we all fight we, we just get too much in our heads and we're thinking stuff which is why it's so nice to have stuff in your stash And some of this is just recycled tissue paper from gifts. You can also, when you're doing a build your stash with all your stamps, you can get out your gel prints or colored papers or your collage sheets that you've created in other build your stash and add a layer of interest to them. And sometimes when I want a fast, easy background, I will grab this and rip and, you know, in that step one collage, just grab these. I like these dots they always seem to be so dark and opaque I love the the contrast they give so I will in an upcoming video use some of what I've created here today on a page and just show you how you can pull from your stash. Oh, I'm loving that. Oops, 
shiny side down. I love swirls. I have a little one that came with a stamp set with a block and it's just that little swirl but I love adding those to the page as well. This is another, this was a joggle stamp and it's a foam stamp and you know, it has not to, stood the test. It works better with, I think, acrylic paint, but I'm going to put some of this on. I love that pattern. And if you have these stamps doing a session like this will get you get them all out of your thing and get you using them again because that's the other part of build your sashes use what you have This is a great thing to do. Take your stamps, make some tissue paper this way, gift it to somebody and or do an exchange. They do one for you, you do one for them and then you have something new and exciting to use in your art journaling. If it looks like I'm having fun, it's because I am. I love this. one which I thought was fairly neutral it I have used it as a focal point but you know you see enough things with that French theme or French words you know on it that it, it can become a neutral One more, 
and then we're going to I wish I could find that more, you know, in a larger size. You could put butterflies on this. I know Tim Holtz has ones, but he's always got the butterflies. Um, any stamp you have, you can use. I just find the red rubber type stamp easier to use. Like I said, in the description box, I will put links to whatever I can find that I've showed you today or something similar, something that may be on my wish list. And if you shop through my Amazon store, please check the prices. Make sure that you're not being dinged with exorbitant shipping costs. I try to pick the best deal at the time, but that changes over time. So, um, you've got to know that and you've got to, you know, protect your money, your, do your crafting dollars. Often when I use it on a tissue paper that I use it either to cover the whole background or I rip parts of it and it's there, sometimes I'll go, oh, I'm going to grab this one again because I want to add it later, maybe with acrylic paint. And just like any time you use the napkin or collage sheets, something in that pre-done paper is going to inspire you for a future layer. So, we 
we have, you know, I think some very different ones using the stamps that I have. I think I might do a few more before I put everything away. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, please do me a solid and share the video. Tell your crafty friends about my channel. If you like what you see, maybe they will too. Um, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, that lets YouTube know that you like what I'm creating. And then they promote my videos a little bit more. So thank you for watching. Uh, give me a comment. What's your favorite background stamp? Put that in. Let's make a list down below. Let's help each other out. Bye for now. So before I go, I just thought I'd show you how I store the texture stamps and the background stamps, the ones that I'm using on my art journal pages with ink, with acrylic paint. I just put them in a basket and this basket is kept within arm's reach of where I do my pages. Then I can just grab it, I can pull it, it's nice and close. Everything is right here. You can see the advantage of taking it off the blocks. This takes a whole lot less storage. Easy accessible. Then I have right beside it my homemade stamps that you saw me create in that last video. I'll put a link to this video. Thanks for watching. So here's a close-up of the finished designer tissue papers that I created during this Build Your Stash session. Which one do you like best? I'm going to number them and you can put your answer in the description box below.